Hello. Welcome to a composable command line parser. You may be wondering what command line parsing and composability uh, have to do with each other. Well, we'll get onto that in a moment. But first of all, who here uh, uses catch for, for testing? So I notice uh, John Lakos didn't put his hand up. Uh, apparently, Bloomberg does have a company-wide approval to use catch, so, uh, so you can rewrite your, your tests. So th this is the, uh, the command line uh, help for catch. So if you use catch, you'll, you'll recognize this. It's actually quite a rich, oh dear, quite a rich um, command line interface. There's all the options as they currently stand. You notice there, they're quite nicely formatted. So down the right-hand side, you've got the, the descriptions of what all the options are, all nicely line wrapped. But it wasn't always like that. So back in the, uh, the very first version of Catch, in fact, if we look at the timeline, back, back with the very first release, there was just a, a very ad hoc uh, parser built in, much like anyone would, would write the very first you know, C++ application, just looping over argc, argv, uh, doing string comparisons. That was about it. But over time, you know, that wasn't really sufficient. It grew. Um, it needed more options. I needed to do string conversions. I needed to do error handling. It became more and more general. In fact, at one point, it became so general, I realized I had a complete command line parser library within Catch, a library within a library. So what I did is I, I split it out as a separate library with, uh, with Catch 1. I called the separate library Clara for command line argument arranger, I think it was. And that had a few problems, like Catch itself at the time. It, uh, it was limited to C++ 98 or 03. Also had a few dead-end design decisions that uh, you know, I've regretted since a little bit. So it was due an overhaul, but it, it was working for Catch, so I left it. So with Catch 2, finally released last week, rebased on C++ 11, so I took the opportunity to go back and completely rewrite Clara. Not only for C++ 11, which it benefits from nicely, but designed around this idea of composability. So what does that actually mean? Let's have a look at an example. So here's right how you write an option parser with Clara. So you can see it's like a, a bit like a mini DSL. So you start with a, with a variable that you want to end up with a, with a value in, like uh, the name at the top here. And what you do is you bind the variable to uh, the, the option, give it a little uh, hint string. You supply the, the options themselves, so uh, n and name here. You can do long and short ops, as many as you want. And a description string that will be printed out in, in the help. And that's it. That's a complete parser, only for one option. And then what happens is you pass in the stream of tokens at the top. It's just a very simple lexa. And after processing, you'll get the stream of remaining tokens plus a, uh, a status that says whether there's an error or not and if there was an error, what the error is. And then, of course, you, know, you can write uh, additional uh, options, additional parsers, and then you can compose them together using this pipe operator. And that's where the magic happens. See, in there, it will take that stream of remaining tokens, and in the case that there's not an error, just pass it on to the next option. But if there is an error, it will short circuit and just return the error. And so the whole thing just acts the same way as an individual parser. And of course, you don't need the intermediate variables. You can just compose them all together in a single de declaration. We can add additional parsers. So here's a, an arg instead of a, an opt. And in fact, if we look at in catch itself, this is exactly how we define the entire command line parser now. Here's the complete set. So hope you got all that. You'll see at the end, we're returning that combined parser. That's actually exposed up to user code. And this is where it gets interesting. You see, in catch, uh, by default, it will define main for you. But you can take control of that. You can provide your own main. Uh, so if you, if you write code like this, it will ex act exactly the same way as the catch provided one. But now you've got places you can hook into. So what we can do here is just add some code, much like we saw earlier, to bind one of these options to, to a variable. But we're going to compose that with the one that catch gives you. The session.cli there is returning it. And then we pass it back to catch. So when catch then passes that to Clara to, to parse, it will parse your option as well as its own, even though it knows nothing about them. And then you can just use your variable in your, in your test code or wherever you want. This has been a long-standing uh, request uh, from Catch to be able to supply your own command line ar arguments. Now it's trivial to do because of this composability. And you see, if we ask for the help, down at the bottom there, we get our new uh, option. Oops. Nicely formatted. We didn't have to do any extra work for that. 
Of course, if you've got your own um, application, not just a, a catch test application using Clara, you might have different components in the application that know nothing about each other. They all want to expose their bit of a command line parser. Now they can do that independently, and it just gets composed at the top uh, in the same way um, that just all work together nicely. So this has been Composable Command Line Parser. I've been Phil Nash. These are the places you can reach me, or I'll be on the JetBrains booth out there. Thank you very much.